Good afternoon. Almost towards the end. Sad? Excited? Ready for more prizes? Uh, so my name's Julie. Uh, and I work at Google, and I'm going to be talking about Protractor, which is the shiny new end-to-end -end testing framework for Angular. So first of all, who am I? Um, you might not have seen me before. Uh, I'm a software engineer in test at Google. Uh, woo! I wasn't expecting that, that's, that's great. Um, I work at the Seattle office, and uh, you can think of me as a 20% plus, plus, plus team member with <laughs> Angular. Um, I, plus, 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 plus. <laughs> uh, so I got into Angular working with a project at Google um, that was associated with double click, so they started using Angular pretty early. And we had um, some issues with the Angular scenario runner testing framework. And so I had the opportunity to start working on a new framework, and um, my boss gave me the okay, and the Angular team gave me the okay, so I've been running with it since then, uh, replacing the Angular scenario runner with Protractor. Um, a lot of people ask what SETs do at Google, and I think that's kind of important to understand where we're coming from. So Google's philosophy is that devs should test their own code, and that means you write your own unit tests, preferably doing some sort of test-driven development, but you also write your own end-to-end -end tests if you're changing big features or you're a front-end dev. And this means that the role of the SET is setting up systems that help devs write tests and help devs be more productive. So I come at testing from the perspective that if you're writing the code, you'll probably be writing the tests. And these are programmers writing tests, and they know what they're doing, but they don't want to be worrying about the infrastructure very much. All right, so what's the big idea around Protractor? Uh, first of all, what's the big idea around end-to-end -end testing? For me, testing is about gaining confidence that your code does what you think your code should do. And if you give me an application in a set of really well unit-tested modules and say, we're going to put this together, I will tell you that that will not work. I have no confidence that your application is going to run end-to-end um, -end without some sort of testing that all of the parts are going to fit together. So end-to-end -to -end testing is about how would a user see this? Does my back-end communicate with my front-end? Uh, am I ready to release this code? It's not a replacement for unit testing, but it's a really nice complement to unit testing. And the main system that Protractor is built on top of is WebDriver. So that probably deserves a slide. WebDriver is a kind of complicated system. It's working towards becoming a web standard, so it's a really solid foundation to build off of. And when you run WebDriver, you've got a couple of processes going on, three actually. The first is your test process. In Protractor's case, it's a Node application, so this is just Node, uh, but there's also bindings for Java and Python, and you may have seen things like Capybara. Um, then there's the WebDriver process, which is some sort of standalone server. WebDriver is also called Selenium. I use them interchangeably. There are historical differences. Um, and that's what's actually running your real browsers with some sort of add-ons that help to drive native events. Um, so you can run Chrome drivers, the one that drives Chrome, Firefox driver, you can interpolate from there. And then finally, that's a real browser, so it can connect to anything. So your application could be something that's running on localhost, or it could be a production instance or a staging instance of your app that's shared somewhere. So the idea behind WebDriver is you're testing like a user, you're using native events, and this gets around a lot of the limitations that the Angular Scenario Runner had because it was running in iframes and it was something that you had to serve on your own site. The final piece of the puzzle here is that Protractor is a framework that's specific to Angular because Angular is great and it gives your page this structure. You're using Angular so we know what your dependency injection looks like and we know a little bit about what your template looks like. And we can take advantage of that to make the black box testing like a user a little bit grayer and, and take advantage of some of these features to make writing tests easier. So before I go on, let's actually look at what this does. So let's start up some of these processes. So I'm going to start up WebDriver, and that'll launch a standalone server. And I'm going to run the tests for Angular's own project. So if you've ever contributed to Angular, you know about this grunt web server. So that's going, that's running, and then we'll actually use the Protractor command line tool, and we pass it a configuration file, which tells it how to connect 
to WebDriver and what your base URL for your application is. And we can play around with that a little bit later. So that's actually going to start up a browser here. And I can, I can go to this browser and I'm not doing anything. It's doing it all itself. <laughs> Clicks through some tests and reports the results back to you on the command line. So that's what we're dealing with. So end-to-end -end testing is great. No, end-to-end -end testing is awful. This is what I hear all the time. I hate doing end-to-end -end tests. They're really hard to set up. They're really hard to write. They're out of date immediately. They just break. Um, they take forever and they're flaky. And once they're flaky, they're impossible to debug. And I, I have all these issues with my application logging in and cleaning up and, and it's terrible. So Protractor addresses a lot of these issues. And I want to go through and talk about what it does to make your life easier and make end-to-end -end testing suck less and what we're planning to do in the future to make it suck even less. So first of all, getting WebDriver running. Um, coming from being an engineer at Google, it's very easy to get in the Google bubble and not realize what the rest of the world does. And we have nice internal systems that manage WebDriver for us. So I didn't realize that this was going to be a problem until I started working with the open source community and realized that managing the different binaries that WebDriver requires is actually a really big pain. So as of version 0.14, there's this WebDriver manager binary that comes with Protractor. And that lets you check the status of the binaries that you have, update them, and start up the WebDriver server really easily. Um, this currently works for Chrome driver and IE driver. Uh, but I'm hoping to have support added for others soon. And if you would like to do that, that'd be a great pull request. Um, there's also really good integration with Sauce Labs, which was mentioned earlier. Sauce Labs has an amazing UI for getting browsers, um, interacting with them, getting videos of how your tests have run, and that makes debugging really easy. So Protractor, you can just change your configuration file to pass in your Sauce Labs username and key, or even do it from the command line. Tests are hard to write. Um, part of the problem here is knowing just what to test. Um, and so my general philosophy is unit tests are great. If it can be a unit test, it probably should be a unit test. But there are some things that you want end-to-end -end tests for. So Protractor borrows a lot of ideas from Karma and the types of testing that Angular already does to try to make this more familiar and easier. Um, the first is the configuration file setup is really similar to what Karma does. And secondly, the test scaffolding that's used by the Angular team and by a lot of apps that have Angular is Jasmine. And so Protractor uses Jasmine. It's patched a little bit so that it understands the asynchronous nature of what's going on. But you'll notice familiar describe before each it expect and assertions on here. And then I've been working a lot to improve the Protractor API itself with some really great suggestions from the Angular team. So Protractor exports a bunch of global variables. Uh, well, not a bunch, only a couple, not too many. Uh, browser is for interacting with things like the URL of the page, uh, or getting the page source, basically any sort of big things you'd need to do with your entire application. And this is actually a wrapper around WebDriver, so anything that WebDriver can do, Protractor can also do. And then this element function lets us interact with individual elements. And it takes as a parameter some method of locating the element. Here are some examples of some Angular-specific method locators, um, which is finding it by its binding, so something ng-bound or in curly brackets, or by its model. And this API makes it a little bit simpler to actually find elements and, and get your tests written. Keeping tests up to date is another thing that I hear is, is very challenging. And I think part of the solution to this is if you're just prototyping, I give you permission to not write end-to-end -end tests. Uh, I, I think there's a time for end-to-end -end tests, and that's when you're not looking at the code very thoroughly before you want to release, if you want to be able to automate more quickly. Um, and I also think that there's a lot of value to adding an end-to-end -end test that only checks one really core or a couple core pieces of your functionality and maybe not the new stuff that you're iterating on so much. But that'll still give you a lot of confidence that you can log into your application and your authentication works and your backend works and your database is not down. But there's other things you can do to help keep your tests easier to keep up to date. And one of them is this pattern called page objects, which I've been trying to encourage 
for those using Protractor. And I know there's a couple of good libraries that are starting to emerge out there as well. This is an example of a really simple page object. The idea is that you are gonna separate the code where you actually find your elements and, and things that are specific to where's the stuff on my web page from the test logic itself. So this page object for the Angular homepage has ways to find the elements for a name input and a greeting, and we all know that Angular homepage where you put in your name and it spits it back out to you. These are cool because that element function that I showed you earlier doesn't actually call anything on WebDriver. It only calls out to WebDriver once you call a method on it. So you can set up these page objects anywhere in your code before you actually have browsers running or anything. And this makes it easier to put them into separate helper files. Since everything in Protractor is Node, you can just require the file wherever you need it, and you have all of the page functionality available to you. So I'd really recommend using that pattern. Slowness and flakiness are some of the things that I personally hate the most about end-to-end -end testing. I think that a flaky test is worse than no test at all in many cases. It just makes everyone ignore it, and um, they, they're hard to keep up to date and useless. So uh, Protractor deals with this with a function that it has called wait for Angular. And you usually won't have to call this yourself. Protractor automatically calls it before anything that would interact with the page or that you might be trying to get information back from the page. And uh, what it does is it takes advantage of Angular's knowing about all of the kind of slow events that are happening. So Angular knows what it's rendering. Angular knows when you're doing HTTP requests and Angular knows about your timeouts. So Protractor can ask Angular, hey, um, are you done with everything? Tell them know when you are, and then it'll move ahead with its tests. And I'm really looking forward to more of the Zone.js stuff helping out with this. I also feel like every talk has to reference the Zone talk a little bit now. So, done. Um, some, some pages actually do need to do some sort of continuous polling. And if you do that with HTTP or timeout, Protractor will never know that your tests are done, so it'll hang. Uh, so instead, you can use the interval service, which Protractor will ignore and which is intended as a wrapper around set interval the same time, the same way that timeout would be a wrapper around set timeout. And finally, debugging. Um, debugging can be really, really frustrating. And part of this is that all of the actions that you're performing go from your test process to WebDriver, and that's over this very specific WebDriver protocol API. So WebDriver doesn't often give a lot of useful information back to your test process. It'll say something like, element not found, or element is hidden, sorry, the user couldn't see that. Um, and, and that's really frustrating because it'll occur like halfway through your really long test and it, it's not good information and if someone who didn't write the test is running it, they have no idea what happened. Uh, Protractor tries to help with this by cleaning up your stack traces a little bit and giving you a little bit of information about the asynchronous events that are occurring. Again, I'm looking forward to Node.js making this even better. And it also gives you improved error messages that'll actually let you know, hey, what was the selector that I was trying to use when I couldn't find an element? I think there's a lot that can be done here, though, and this is one of my focuses going forward. I also want to demo a little binary that we have called the Element Explorer, uh, which automatically ships with Protractor, but it's kind of hidden in the binary folder. So here we go. We'll give it a command line, which is just a URL to open up. And we get a browser here, and we can interact with this. This is, this is a normal browser, so I can hop around here, go to ng class or whatever. Okay, so uh, back here, we've got a loop, and I press tab and get a list of suggestions. And it's guessing that what I want to do is probably find an element. So yeah, let's find an element, and let's find it by its finding. Um, and let's first of all show something that does not exist. So that gives me the element finder. Remember, this element function just returns this element finder, which is an object with a whole lot of methods that we can call on it. Let's try to actually get the text out of that element. And we get this nice little message that there was a web driver error and the whole thing doesn't completely break and, and shut down immediately. And it tells you that we couldn't find anything with that locator. Okay, um, I think there's something on this page 
with a binding name. More than one thing, actually. Um, but the, the first one is ng. And if we look here, that's actually this little guy. So let's go ahead and click on that. And that interacts with the page, and we move to ng. So I think this is a really useful way of building up your page objects, figuring out what you're actually going to be wanting to test. Close that down. All right, that's our element explorer. Oh, and one more thing I, I also wanted to show, backtracking a tiny bit, um, is what Protractor can do about slowness. This is something I've been trying out very recently, I think is really cool. So here's the configuration file for those tests that I showed earlier. It has information about what tests we're running, how to connect to the browser. And there's this on prepare function. And that's going to run after Protractor is loaded, but before any of the, once before any of the test modules. We have this add mock module function on Protractor. And this asks Angular to pause when it's loading up your application and give it a second to say, hey, here's some additional modules that I want to load before I run these tests. In this case, this is this disable ng animate module. And this is a super simple module that just grabs the animate service and disables it. So I've uncommented that. And let's run these tests again. Notice that they took seven seconds when I first did it. We'll open up the server again. You can look here and see that we don't have any of those nice fade animations going on and tests run a little bit faster. So this is a great way to make changes to your code when you're testing it without actually having to change anything about your code. This is all just from the test. All right, so everything's a little better there. There's some things that Protractor is not great with helping with, and a lot of these are really application specific or specific to how you're doing authentication or what your database looks like. Questions like, how do I log in before I run my tests? How do I clean up my database after my tests? Um, and I would love to see more community ideas around how you do this with your particular authentication schemes and with your particular databases. Because I don't think that there's one golden solution, but I think that there's a lot of ways that we can help each other. So what's coming up next for us? Uh, we're formalizing the contract between Angular and Protractor. Right now, Protractor uses a couple of incidental APIs from Angular. Some of them are kind of intended as private APIs, and that's not really sustainable going forward. So we're going to come up with an official contract that Angular and Angular Dart will support. And this will let Protractor work with both languages and have an easy place for us to add features in the future. This will have functions like uh, the wait for Angular. So um, letting Protractor know when it's finished, and better methods of finding elements. We're migrating away from the Angular scenario runner and migrating all of the uh, internal tests to Protractor, which will give a lot of better examples, and I'm sure we'll find ways to clean up Protractor and make testing even easier as we do that migration. And finally, as I mentioned, I want to improve Element Explorer and help the debugging experience and make end-to-end -end testing surprisingly painless. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>